You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Happiness Ninja Down Under with your host, Jamie Rose. Jamie will educate and empower people, organizations, and communities to help us all make better health and well-being choices. She will also engage you with expert influencers from around the world. So now, please welcome the host of Happiness Ninja Down Under, Jamie Rose. Welcome to Happiness Ninja Down Under. Uh, this is Jamie Rose, your host of the series, and you are tuning in to Bold Brave TV. Coming to you live from a very stormy New York City. I have a, another wonderful guest. Uh, we have my second guest called Tony. This is Tony Priddle. He is also Australian. Thanks, Tony, for joining me. Hi, Jamie. How are you? I'm good. Um, so... Uh, just so the audience knows, so um, you are an ex-professional uh, Australian Rugby League football player. Uh, you played uh, nationally and internationally for about seven years, is that right? That's correct. Uh, and then you have, um, that, that has led nicely into you being an expert in um, optimal performance. And now you do um, coaching, mindset coaching, life coaching, all si kinds of things with um, professional athletes, Commonwealth Games stars, um, you name it. Uh, and, and you're doing some really cool things with them on remapping their minds and reprogramming them, aren't you? Yeah, well, this is so life's been all about virtually one thing for me, and that is optimal human performance. So yeah. I started out at 14 years old. I was um, a national level rower in my younger days, and I had a choice to go from the AIS to, to go to the AIS, which is Australian Institute of Sport, or go to play professional rugby league. I I, I actually chose the money route and went <laughs> went to play professional sport um, because the row yeah, well the rowing was good, but I mean the amount of work you did to get no pay, and then you have to pay for everything. Yeah, not an option I took. So I went down the professional sporting route, got a sports science degree while I was in the early years of professional sport. And and that's purely been my life ever since. That's that's incredible, actually. I didn't even know that. Um, we you know, we've we've known each other for a couple of years now, or actually it'd be five more than five years now. Wow, time goes really quickly. Um yeah. I, I met you because I came to one of your programs. Uh, well, no, I think we met through other people that were doing similar things, but then I, I heard about your program um, and it was a, I don't think I've ever told you this, but it was a, a massive shift for me. I mean, you you saw the shift that I had in there. You probably don't remember it, but um, it wasn't the start of my journey, but it was, it, it was the start of um, the energy work though. You, you, yeah, you really well, it, me for that. Well, it, the people I get, normally the people I get are the people who have actually tried the system. Like, and I mean, and I don't mean just the medical system. I mean the system of self-help that's out there at the moment as well. And the, the world has moved on, essentially. So people who have um, tried a lot of stuff, they're just going, I need some answers to the black and, and normally high performers only have minor problems mm -hmm. so they just need a tune-up mm. and i actually teach mental skills i so, I, I know that <laughs> so, how, so how to think 
So this is what, so the ability on um, how to think and then like there's an education that goes along with that because we've got to understand how this actually works first. And one thing that's not taught in our education system and it's starting to with positive psychology mm. is literally our, we never make a conscious decision ever. Our brain runs on prediction. Mm. And this yep. is what most people, and when people start to start to understand this, they they need to be able to go, okay, control, to be able to control a thought, you actually got to become aware of a thought. So this is where mindfulness comes in. And if you're not aware of the thought, you're actually just running on a program. So exactly. the, un, the, unconscious, the unconscious program. So people don't relate thoughts and emotions like they relate it to their heart beating or their blood circulating or the, you know, the autonomic systems in our body. Our brain works autonomically all the time. Mm -hmm. And we've been designed to survive. And that's all. That brain's been designed to keep us alive. So it makes sense of the, in, in the incoming stimulus However, we've learned to deal with that incoming stimulus, all based on past experience. So this is where if we can start to understand how it works and then understand when we can we, we can start interrupting those patterns and then start changing those patterns, we can really make big inroads into what's going on in our life. And it's actually quite um, it's quite remarkable. Uh, so I'll just tell this story um, for the sake of the audience and for setting it and then uh, it, it'll probably, I don't know what you remember or not, but we, we both struggled with the same concept when we were first sort of introduced into energy work. Like it can't just be that simple. Like you can't just like, you know, <laughs> yes. tell, your, tell your brain and body to, to, to start doing something and then it'll, it'll work because that's not what they, you know, that's not what science and the doctors and and the mainstream you know um uh, agenda it teaches us so it, I, I, you really like hit the nail on the head for me in terms of that and then recognizing like you know through time and and having that huge shift with you it it really is that simple it just takes time and people have to believe it really to understand to start to understand it what really made a difference for me with that type of information is the body is actually made up of energy. We're 99.99999% energy, 0.00001% matter. So, um, and I came from a science background, sports science degree, physical, um, the, the actual slowness of changing the physical form. Mm. So many, many years of training, I mean many, many years, 14 to, 14 to 18, you know, to, to make it as a professional athlete. And then from 18 to 30, you know, constantly training, paid full time to train. Exactly. So many, many hours. So you're 100% correct. And it's a what's, brutal sport. <laughs> well, what's, what's faster? The chemicals? Or electricity, the energy. Exactly. Energy is way, way faster. So energy, the energy psychology side of things blew my mind because that was the first thing when I went and actually first studied the energy psychology type of it. I went, it can't be this simple. That's why I laughed when you said yeah. uh, <laughs> it was too easy. Well, it's I remember easy. you saying that to me too. <laughs> yeah, it's easy once you have the skills though. Exactly. And yeah. this is where understanding that um, the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, because we actually think we actually think the conscious mind is where we actually think we're conscious and we're interacting with the world on a, in a conscious way. The conscious mind is like a boardroom. It makes you aware of what's around you in your space and what you're thinking of. So conscious mind and exactly. subconscious mind if we can start to understand it, it's it's an awareness space and what you bring into your conscious mind can be anything that you focus on. 
Exactly. Uh, we have to wrap to the to the break, but um, you're 100% correct. And when we come back, uh, I'd like to dig deeper into that because I think that most people, um, sadly, do think they are conscious, uh, 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 in in control of their decisions, but. It is the unconscious mind that's in control, not our conscious brain. So we'll be back in a moment and we'll, um, we'll get into that further. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Happiness Ninja, guys. I'm Jamie Rose, and you are on Bold Brave TV. I have the incredible Tony Friddle. He is an ex-Australian rugby league coach, uh, rugby league player turned optimal human performance coach. Thanks, Tony. I uh, I hope it is nice and sunny there because it is terrible here. <laughs> uh, we we have got one of the a magic day, and I'm I'm actually really lucky this weekend. I'm actually whale watching. That's amazing. Have you gone out yet? No, we're going out. After, yeah, after this uh, session, we'll cool. be going out. Yeah. Um, amazing. I haven't been to Harvey Bay in a very, very long time. Um, so cool. Um, so we, uh, you know, the, the session goes so quickly. So I'll get stuck into um, what we're here for to talk about um, optimal human performance, and you know that just opens up a whole can of worms. Um, so as I was saying before the break, you you were a professional um, rugby league player for seven years, and then um, you've been. How long have you been doing the coaching for now? Well, I've been coaching people for the last twenty five years I've, with a sports science degree. I was into the physical side of performance, and then, uh, as we were discussing before the break, uh, the energy the energy work. I've worked out to get better performance. It's we we should train change the thing that creates the electricity and the chemicals. So if we can change that, we're going to be performing better and and we'll make faster changes. So physical performance, we know that we got to work on cell turnover and wait, you know, wait for the muscle damage for weight training and all this kind of stuff to heal to get stronger. But um, why I do what I do essentially is because. I actually got to play in the NRL. I got to play over 100 games at the elite level here in this country, but I actually never felt like I fulfilled my true potential. Mm, interesting. And this is the, the whole time. Say that. Sorry. Say that again. Do you feel something was missing the whole time? Well, the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. So understanding the brain, you can only utilise what you've learnt up until this point in time because it's a prediction algorithm. Mm, exactly. 
because it runs on programs and conditioning. And, you know, like I, I went to one of the top universities in the country to get a sports science degree to understand how to be the best I can be. But it talked only about the physical and not about the mental. Oh, we did. Sorry, we did sports. We did sports psychology, but it was a really minor part. And that still didn't teach me how my mind actually worked. So I could do the physical training. I was good. Like, I mean, that's where I excelled in the physical side of it. I had a massive VO2 cardiovascular system for a big guy. So 220 pounds, um, you know, and we play for 80 minutes here. We don't, we don't run on and off. We actually play for 80 minutes. So I was one of those guys that could, you know, be at this size and run around for that period of time. But the problem I had was I struggled with the media, the fans, the stardom, the money, you know, the fame, being let in, you know, like all that stuff I just couldn't mentally cope with. So my biggest problem was we had a lot of stress, as in physical stress training, and then off the field I had a lot of mental stress, so I had no recovery time. Mm. So optimum performance was never really on the cards. So essentially I burnt up a whole heap of hormones and the the youth I burnt up my youth by being stressed all the time and not being able to understand how to control this. Mm. So when I left sport, I was rather disappointed because I like I mean I had a great career, but I didn't I didn't achieve my ultimate goal was which was to represent my state and my country um so i was looking um constantly because there was there was always a part of me that wasn't that i felt wasn't right and that was my mind because i i I presume a lot of people could relate to this now is that you can be good at what you you can be good at what you do, but you're not happy. And nothing's ever really good enough. And I thought that was a really good driver to be an athlete. But what I've come to understand, the personality you have right now will get you to a position. And that's what I, my personality got me to a particular position. But to go beyond that position, we have to change the way we see see the world and we, the way we, re, we react in the world. So what what was good to get me there didn't get me any further. It got mm-hmm. me there and got me there, but it didn't take me beyond that. And that's the piece I was looking for. And I, you know, like I've studied NLP, hypnotherapy, um, you know, been digging into epigenetics, um, neuroscience, and finally found something that actually changed the way I thought. And that's been the key. Like, and this is this is why I do what I do now is because I want to give people the opportunity to be able to utilize their full genetic potential. And the yeah. way to do that is combining the physical work with the mental, so the physical skills with the mental skills and if you have those, if you have those two combined, you're going to be able to access more of your true potential. So, well, you only need to look at what happens um, to, you know, say an, an example that comes to my mind is, you know, a mother who can suddenly lift up a, a two-pound car, a two-ton car to save their child trapped under. Um, you know, it, the mind is so incredibly powerful. Um, and it's it's very underutilized and um, and underknown just how incredibly powerful we are because we just weren't raised to have this innately you know taught to us. If anything, it was hidden from us. Um, I, I I just imagine I was thinking about this before the show. I thought, imagine if we were raised as babies to speak to ourselves nicely and lovingly and tell our body how amazing it worked and functioned on a, like a, you know, repetitive daily basis instead of the, because the language we use, you know, that's all energy as well. Imagine if we were taught that, how incredibly different we would be as as a human structure. It's just, I've opened up a can of worms because we do have to cut to the break again, 
But um, we can talk about that more if you have some ideas on that too when we come back from the break, because um, I'm sure you do. So, Absolutely. <laughs> fantastic. All right, well, stay tuned, guys, and we'll be back in a moment. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to Happiness Ninja Down Under. I'm Jamie Rose and you are listening to Bold Brave Media. I have Tony Priddle with me here today. He is an Australian that I've known for quite a few years now. He is an ex-professional sports player, and he is an optimal performance coach. Thanks, Tony, once again for joining me. Um, so before the break, we we opened up a bit of a can of worms. Um, what, what's I would like your thoughts on um, on if we did we were raised differently. And we did speak to ourselves kinder and we did use energy work from, you know, let, let's just say a, a toddler or we were taught it from you know, day one by our parents because society functioned differently. Uh, what do you see? The Do you think there are any limits to the human potential or how do you view that? Well, it's – so the first eight years of our life are critical. We and it's yeah. it's brainwave. It's literally brainwaves. So the a child when they're born in the first two years, delta brainwave state. So they are literally in a deep sleep, but they're awake. So whatever they look, whatever they're looking at, hearing, feeling, seeing, is going into their brain unfiltered, and they're learning. So if you want, um, I talk about this a lot in sport. So Tiger Woods had a golf club in his hand at two years old. Um, uh, Pat, uh, Andre Agassi had a tennis racket strapped to his hand when he was two years old. Martina Hingis was named after Martina Navratilova. Her parents had an agenda. So superstars in sport are uh, developed, you know, before the age of six years old. Um, and it's conditioning, it's programming. So what, and this is this is the bit where most athletes don't get it. Your personality is programmed. Mm. So the first eight years, so the first two delta, two to four, you're going into um, alpha, no, theta. Then you're going mm. into alpha. So by the time you're six, you've had six years of super learning. That's why kids are, that's why kids pick up everything that you do. So four billion bits of information going in. Mm -hmm. per second for that period of time 
your personality is 75% developed by the time you're eight years old. Mm. So um, what could happen if we had aware parents and who, who had completely reset their thought pattern before they had children? We literally don't know. Like, there is, you know, like, are superpowers real? Well, I think so. Because people, if you can imagine them, you can, there's a potential for them to happen. Mm-hmm. So, and you can, uh, Masters of the Far East, there's a book that's been, was written um, by some scientists in the, in the 20s or 30s who went into the Far East and they walk in and they were actually witnessing people levitate and they were people living to five, 600 years old. Exactly. And so with what's happening in the world today, I know, we, I know we're not allowed to talk about it, but no, with, what's ha- <laughs> <laughs> with what's happening in the world, we've been conditioned to believe particular things and Lots of stuff has been left out of the education system that potentially could make a big difference to our society and the world as a population. I was so, just about to say, I think that we might all start learning just how much we haven't been taught about how to reach our full potential quite soon. <laughs> well, I've got two examples of this from the sporting world. So I'm a, I'm a child, like a... I was born in the 70s, played professional sport in the 90s, um, and I, everyone would would have an understanding about um, I, uh, recovery from injuries mm-hmm. and how ice is the fastest way to recover. You get a bang, a bump, or a bruise, you put ice on it, and you're, spo- it's supposed to be, you're supposed to recover faster. Mm-hmm. It's actually a myth. It's now been debunked. So... That was the biggest thing in my mind that, that one of the biggest things in my mind that shifted because if ice is a myth and ice actually slows recovery rates down, what else have we been lied to about? Like, and it, I don't know if this was a genuine, you know, constructed lie or whatever, but it is something that um, has been entrenched in our society and now the myth has been busted. And yeah. another one, is, and another one in the sporting arena, is that you could not put your knee over your toes when you squatted, because mm-hmm. it would damage your knees. It's now been debunked. It's been it's now been debunked as well. Mm. So, and I'm actually learning that right now. So, sports science degree, professional athlete, taught certain ways of doing things. Now I'm rehabilitating a knee that was virtually destroyed while I played. Mm. And I'm now pain free after about 10 years doing a different rehabilitation program, doing what I've been told not to do mm-hmm. and getting and the fine. best benefits I've ever had for, yeah. the, you know, for the rest of my life. Um, so I, I've got two stories that debunk the same thing. Um, my brother uh, broke his foot a few years ago uh, when he was overseas and uh, he, he had no idea that he broke it. He knew something was a little bit funny with it. He thought he just, like, slightly tripped on something and injured it. Then he had to go to the doctors um, for something else. He nearly lost his leg and had emergency surgery. And at the same time, they found this broken foot. And he was like, oh, okay. I didn't even know that it was broken. I just knew it was, like, a bit sore. And they said, oh, yeah, you're going to have to need, like, a titanium plate in it. It's never going to be the same. Like, you've really done damage to it. And he thought, well, considering I can hardly feel that it really hurts that much, I'm not going to do that because that seems like extreme to have surgery and put plates and titanium into you when you can't even really tell anything's wrong. So he was like, I'm just going to wait and see and, like, see if it gets better. And he just forgot about it and he's fine now. And the same thing happened to me last – yeah, exactly. At last year, I, um, I sprained both of my ankles uh, a month apart. And I had a lot of problems walking when I had done both of them. And I just adopted the mindset. Like, everyone was like, aren't you going to go to the doctors? Are you going to get it checked out? You need to get, like, physiotherapy. I was like, well, I don't have any way to do that living over here or on, in the situation that I'm in. So I'm just going to have to persevere and forget about it. And I just kept walking around on it. And I literally just – one day I woke up – I don't even know when. 
it, it, it was slightly painful and then all of a sudden it just doesn't hurt anymore. And people told me I would need physiotherapy or I would need surgery. Like professional podiatrists said that. And, I, and, it's, and I'm fine. So I've gone over there and we need to cut to the break again. Um, but we'll continue this when we come back. Thanks, guys. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels. And with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Welcome back to Happiness Ninja Down Under. I'm Jimmy Rose, and you are on Bold Brave TV. I have Tony Priddle, an awesome person from Australia, ex-professional rugby league player turned human performance coach. Tony, before the break, um, we, we've been discussing a lot of different things. We've gone down the energy route and, um, and the, the ability for human beings to potentially possess possess um, supernatural human powers. Um, you mentioned a few examples. Um, uh, another example I can think of that I think the audience may be able to relate to is we've all heard different extreme versions of like there's the guys that can put uh, swords down their throat, um, you know, the, the karate chopping guys, they chop through wood. These are, you know, these are all like mainstream versions I feel like give you hints into what the human um, body and brain is capable of. Um, could you share some, some more thoughts on and some experiences um, of what you've seen and what you think what we could be capable of if we know how to harness it, which is what you essentially are helping people to, te- uh, to learn? Well, this is so if we can understand what our conscious mind really is, our conscious mind is something that we're aware of in this waking state we're in, right? So... The thing, the, the probably the biggest skill I've learned since I've done this stuff, and remember, physical, physical athlete, like running into people for a living, like pretty stupid when you look back on it. You look at what, what, I, what I did to my body. And yeah. Then, <laughs> and then I'm just getting into the mind and understanding the mind. I didn't realize from a very small child, I actually was very emotional. Like, so I had, you know, like if I was happy, I was happy. If I was, like, if I was angry and I was in a situation, I'd be, you know, like furious. And what I didn't understand as a kid and growing up is that I have the ability to, of empathy. So feeling into someone else's, feeling someone else's emotions and thinking it was mine. Mm. One of the biggest skills I have is when I'm working with a client, I can actually, this sounds a bit, int- this, well, this is interesting. I can sit in someone's body and tell them how they're feeling when a thought, 
puts a peptide down into their body, I can feel that. And, you know, that, that can be explained with science with mirror neurons and, and whatnot. But I just have, I've honed my ability to consciously be aware of someone else and be in their mind and body. So the, this is focus and intention. I put my conscious awareness, my conscious mind goes onto someone else. And I can li literally hear what them, what's happening in, in their mind and feel what's going on in their body. And people will go, well, impossible. So if you're in the if you're in the states, just go and look at some of the documents that have been released now from the 70s of the the um, remote situation that your armies, the the U.S. Army and the um, Russian armies developed remote viewing programs. So you, this uh, so, is it the gateway process, or well, in, so part of that? Remote, Remote viewing is being able to put yourself into a meditative state mm -hmm. yeah. and you have a coordinates on the planet somewhere and you can put your consciousness onto those coordinates and walk around, literally walk around so and, ex, you know, explore what is actually there. And this is legit programs that were done by the military. Yeah, I've, I've heard of the gateway process which the CIA developed. Um, and it's to learn, I, I believe it's to learn similar things. Um, it's, it's to learn how to activate the, the, the body um, and to harness our power and to do um, astral planning, and, which is, from my understanding, is I don't know if it's like exactly the same as remote viewing or it's similar. It's, it's pretty similar. Ast yeah. Astral projection and remote viewing are pretty similar things. You're, mm -hmm. you, you're going to have ability to control your consciousness um, when you're asleep. So you can control mm. your dreams essentially with astral, project astral projection and, um, and remote viewing is a pretty similar, pretty similar thing, but they do it with a um, meditative state. Okay. And I they have guides. And they, so it's, it's very interesting. Like this is what we don't understand. We're more, we are way more than what we're told. Oh yeah. Without it. Yeah. Well, we're at, we're actually a spiritual being having a journey, and this is this is where my my theory and high performance is is altering to the standard theories out there. I'm combining mind, body, and spirit mm. because you've got to be aware of actually what you're not to be able to reach your full potential. And the really cool thing about this is, and this is where a lot of people get hope when when they work with me is that the first question I ask anyone is tell me who you are. And then you gauge from the language and the way they describe themselves where some of their issues lie. Well, it, it just tells me, like it just gives them an understanding of what they're not. Because when you break it down, you're not a job. You're, you're actually, you're not, your, you're not just a female. You're not just your name. You're not just your age. And this is what most people, when they ask, tell me who you are, this is what they'll tell us. Because society goes, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, I want to be a fireman. More programming. Well, yeah. What do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be absolutely stoked and happy and living the best life possible, doing something I love. I don't want to go out. Like, I mean, we're conditioned to go out and just get a job and go, well, that's what I want to be when I grow up. So it's conditioning. So we're not our job. We're actually not our personality. We're actually not our brain. Mm -hmm. We're not our body because they all change. And it gets in, it gets into the semantics of words. So you've got to understand what you're actually talking about and start looking into the words that we use on a daily basis because you were talking about words earlier. I, I recommend everyone just go out and look up the word human being. Human being. Human is homo sapien. Like, that's our species. Mm -hmm. Being is the nature or essence of a person. The nature or essence of a person. And the synonym to nature or essence is soul or spirit. Mm. They actually tell us in the dictionary what we are. So if we want to reach our true potential, 
understand who and what you are and know that you've got a shitload more to give. And the only thing that's covering the actual essence of who you are is a persona, which word, word that develops from developed to make personality. A persona is a mask worn in theatre to project a different role or disguise your identity. Exactly. Um, we do have to cut to another break. Um, the, the next level on that would be to look at the numerology behind it because I'm now learning about that and its relevance and it's fascinating, um, which all relates to energy. It's another can of worms, but we do have to cut to the break um, and we will be back in a moment, guys. Stay tuned. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back to Happiness Ninja Down Under. I'm Jemmy Rose, and this is Bold Brave TV. Thank you for joining me again, Tony. Um, wow. Okay, so this has gone really quickly. What? Wh where were we at? I, I think I sort of cut you off uh, with a story and then wrapped it up quickly. <laughs> so we're, we were just we were just talking about words and per like you know personality. You know where persona persona came from. Yeah. Um, it's so we really need to understand what we're not because the only thing getting in your road of achieving any result that you want is the stuff that you've been taught up until this point in time and i keep when i work with a client it goes back to your brain is predictive your, your brain makes a decision 600 milliseconds before you act out on that thought. And this is, this is just the basis of understanding of how to make change. You become aware of that thought at 400 milliseconds and you have 200 milliseconds to pattern interrupt the thought of the process. And we've all had the ability, we all understand this because there will be times when you're in a conversation and you have this thought and you want to, it wants to come out your mouth, but you actually have the ability to control it, right? Exactly. Is, when we have a conversation, of course, that's what most people end up getting stuck on. They stop listening because they're focused on what they want to say when there's a break. Well, your so your brain is actually dealing with this conversation based on past experience and mm -hmm. your 600 milliseconds behind this conversation because what's coming out your mouth your brain's already made the decision to do it exactly so to control an emotion 
Oh, if I just say you like it's your boss and your boss says something to you and you're you get furious inside, but you have the ability to control it. That's called mindfulness, right? Exactly. So that is the your brain's made the decision. You become aware of it and you've had 200 milliseconds to control it. So you, there's a pattern interrupt there. So you don't so it doesn't come out. Most mm -hmm. people don't understand this and they go from what's called readiness potential and to action. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a, say you're in a relationship and you're comfortable with the person and you lose your shit with your partner and it just comes out on the spot and then, you know, after you've, you know, went away and calmed down, you go, oh, my God, that was right. so ridiculous. Yeah. Why did I need to do that? Mm -hmm. You couldn't help it. If you don't understand this. Yeah, you, you get too good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, the reticular activating system. You have to understand how the brain works to to control it. Correct. So this is where when I, this is the stuff we're not taught. So remember, we're back earlier in the conversation. Seventy-five percent of your personality is done by the time you're eight years old. So I'm now fifty-one years old, and there are times and that you just have to be aware of. There are times that I act like an eight-year-old. I'm throwing a tantrum. We and, all do. <laughs> well, this is, but this is what people don't get, right? They think it's just the way they are. This is just how I am. This is how I got here. Can't be further from the truth because until, well, it, it's it's the truth until you actually understand this. Until exactly. you understand that you can change a memory. Like this is, so we get into the 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 best thing about what I do is we have this ability. I have this ability to see inside someone's mind so I can actually see what's going on in their mind when we're dealing with a topic. Mm -hmm. And if you focus on a certain aspect of someone's mind, you can actually find the, the, the point of origin of yeah. where an emotion was, um, where an emotion was created. So we can remap memories and it's really interesting. The way you last remember a memory is the way you will remember that memory in the future. The next time around. Uh, there's, a, yeah. there's a nice little tongue twister, right? Yeah, you're remembering, you're remembering the memory. The, you're remembering the memory of the memory, and the last time you remembered the memory, not the actual memory. <laughs> well, then, and this is this is. Like I can tell you how many tries I scored playing rugby league, and they all got bigger and better. Right. Yeah. I can just I can just put those memories in my memory. Right. So what we don't understand is the, those first eight years of our lives, we've just been imprinted with a way to deal with the world. And so uh, in relationships, probably, probably the easiest one to work with is because you're just mimicking your parents or the relationship you see your parents have. And by the time you're eight, you'll either go, I'm going to be like that or I'm going to not be like that. But you've got a bunch of different programs in there. If we can go back into that unconscious programming, which is simply a matter of where you put your conscious intention and focus, mm -hmm. we can go back in and explore that and give our young selves the wisdom that we've gained up until this point in time to remap a memory and actually work out the lesson or find the way to be able to deal with that memory. When that yeah. memory changes when you are five years old, it actually changes in the present moment the way your brain is going to predict the next time you're in this same event. It's very powerful. So the fastest way to move forward is to change the way you remember an event by utilising the wisdom you have today and remapping a memory from the past. So the fastest way to move forward, I found, is to actually get in and remap memories from the past. I'm and not sure if um, mind mapping is what you did with me. Uh, remember you did a coaching session on, I had a, um, a poverty money issue mindset. Um, I, I've changed that now, but I'm not sure if it was the mind mapping you did because I had to do ongoing meditation for about a year um, to, to, to get rid of that. But you're, you were the first uh, person that I saw about it. 
like the, we'll, the first we'll, person I came to. Mm. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. All right, well, that, we have to cut to the break. We have one more segment. Um, so we'll cut and we'll come back and we'll wrap this up and then we'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Stay tuned. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Happiness Ninja Down Under. I'm Jamie Rose, and this is Bold Brave TV. This is the last segment of the show. It always goes so fast, and there's so much more I want to get into. Um, Tony, uh, so while the break was on, we were before the break, we were we were talking about um, uh, people's programmings and and how to um, be aware of their brain, and we're talking about money, and uh, I shared a bit of um, a story. Um, so we were talking in the break. If you just wanted to share. Um, the story that you were telling me with the audience, because it's very powerful and very interesting, and I think it will help them, um, you know, inter to go inwards and think about it themselves. Yeah, well, so talking about money, poverty mindset, it's conditioning. So we, like, we don't, we don't even have control over what we think most of the time. Ninety-five percent of our day is subconscious, right? So we go through our day unconscious. But remembering four billion bits of information per second. So there's a whole bunch of conditioning that's in there. And you mentioned that we started on the remapping process and took you a year. So that is, there's a whole bunch of information and there's a whole different, um, there's a whole lot of aspects around money. And there's a, many ways that you can look at money. One of the ways I did it in session was I'd have $5,000 of $100 notes and I'd just pick it up, just get it and throw it to someone and go, well, tell me how you feel about that. And you'll be mind blown about what the differences in reactions there are to that. And if there's anything negative comes up, we've got a connection between a, a, an, a, a memory from the past, the ability to deal with this type of money how much money there was there and what they what they really felt so it's the emotion so if you really want to know when you're when there's a fault in your program or in the conditioning mm -hmm. a negative emotion will come up when it's not appropriate so essentially one of the ways we work on this if you are not in a life or death situation and there's not many of those around so there actually is very little need to go have a negative emotion in today's world, like especially in the Western world of where we are, 
Well, well, sorry. Considering where we are now in the world, there's probably a little, <laughs> a little bit Point. more. Eighteen months ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, but again, this can be controlled as well because it's the way you exactly. perceive the world and what's happening in the world. But so I yeah. still had. I've still had the best year of my life or two years of my life. So, sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, but I've got to be more mindful of people now with the situation that we're dealing with because it has created a lot more mental health problems and all that kind of stuff. Those can be dealt with. This, this situation we're in can be dealt with as well because it's the way you perceive the world. So, literally... Any negative emotion you have is just telling you that you've got a belief from the past that can be remapped so it doesn't happen in the future, essentially. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we are out of time, um, but that is, it's very powerful. It's very, um, I mean, to me and you, it's very obvious what people need to do um, and that the sooner they start the journey, the better off they are because we have so many programmings. It's like peeling back an onion layer after layer. Um, you, I know that you've just rebranded and you're We Transcend now, aren't you? Uh, so where can people go? Is it wetranscend.net? People can go and check you out, Tony? Yeah. We, we Transcend.net and mm -hmm. probably the only social media platform I use is um, Facebook. So Tony Priddle, We Transcend on Facebook if you want to catch up with me there. Highly recommend checking Tony out, guys. He's helped me in the past. Um, he was, a, you know, I, I haven't gotten to where I am without the help of, a whole bunch of people and a lot of them I'm bringing onto this show um, to help highlight to the world um, how to overcome yourself. I am a completely different person than I was uh, even two years ago. Um, so this is, we are at the end of the show. We have to wrap up. Um, but yeah, check Tony out and tune in with us next week. Take care and have a great weekend. This has been Happiness Ninja Down Under with your host, Jamie Rose. Tune in each week and join the conversation as Jamie highlights the true power of the human mind to create a thriving world. Right here on Jamie Rose's Happiness Ninja Down Under. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.